Choosing a degree is a long decision process. I'm a postgraduate study mentor, and over 80% of my mentees had mentioned the importance of the job prospects. In this video, I'll share 10 factors for conversion degrees in total. Although it's mainly for conversion degrees, most of the tips are appropriate for general degrees as well. Let's dive into the details. The first factor is checking job opportunities for graduates. There are seven ways of finding jobs. And the first one is contact career services. They often collect data on graduate employment outcomes and can provide statistics on job placements, sectors of employment, and average salaries. The second way is via alumni network. You can use LinkedIn to search for alumni of the program. Check their profiles to see their career progression, current job titles, and companies they work for. LinkedIn's alumni tool can filter by location, industry, and job function. You can also contact the university's alumni association. They can provide insights into where graduates are working and connect you with alumni for informational interviews. The third way is their university website and their publications. Many uni publish annual reports on the destinations of their graduates. These reports often include employment rates, sectors, and job roles. You can also do your survey through case studies and testimonials. You can look for them from past graduates on the uni's website. This often highlights successful career paths and notable employers. The fourth one is employability rankings and surveys. Check rankings that focus on graduate employability, such as QS graduate employability rankings. These can give an overall picture of how well regarded the uni's graduates are by employers. As most students are from different backgrounds in a conversion degree, this ranking can only give you a big picture. The fifth one is industry connections and partnerships. You can research if the uni has partnerships with specific industry leaders, tech companies, or startups. Universities with strong industry connections often have better job placement rates. Also, you can check if the program includes internships, work placements, or cooperative education programs which can lead to job offers after graduation. Next is student and graduate forums. Participate in online forums and discussion groups such as the student room, where current and past students share their experiences about job opportunities and employability. Also, join social media groups or pages related to the uni or specific program to gather insights from current students and recent graduates. Next is to speak with current students about their internship experiences, job search support, and perceived employability. These seven ways above could let you understand the job market more. Next, let's do some surveys on university reputation. To know their reputation, there are two means. First, you can consider both overall university rankings and subject-specific rankings to gauge the quality of education. Then, investigate the faculty's expertise, research interests, and industry connections. Faculty with strong research backgrounds and industry experience can provide valuable insights and networking opportunities. The next one is the most important one, course content. So, remember to review the course content and structure. Ensure it covers fundamental areas. If it's computer science, considering programming, data structures, algorithms, database, as these four are the most fundamental ones in the whole computer science area. Next, check if the program offers electives or specializations in areas that interest you, such as artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, data science, or web development. To see all entry requirements and modules of UK computer science conversions, I've published an ebook for that, as the chat node needs support to keep running and provide accurate information for conversion degrees. Please go for it if you need that. I will put the link below. The next one is mode of study. You need to decide whether you want to study full-time or part-time. Full-time programs are usually one year long, while part-time options can take two years or more, allowing you to work alongside your studies. My study was all full-time as it was a conversion degree. I was a pharmacist turning into computer science, and the overwhelming assignments were horrifying. So I didn't consider a part-time option. However, another of my classmates was a UK pharmacist. He still got the community pharmacy to work on weekends. So it's all your choice. 
Besides, you should decide if an online or on-campus degree is more suitable for you. To solve this problem, there are two factors we need to take into account. The first one is your learning style. If you prefer direct interaction in a structured environment, on campus might be better. If you're self-motivated and need flexibility, online could be a great fit. The second one is program quality. Make sure to research the reputation and accreditation of the program you are considering as the quality of education can vary significantly between institutions. Determine if you prefer an online program for flexibility or an on-campus experience for direct interaction with faculty and peers. The fifth one is entry requirements. Ensure you meet the academic requirements. Most conversion programs accept students from various undergraduate backgrounds, but specific prerequisites may vary. To see all entry requirements and modules of UK computer science conversions, I've published an ebook for that, and the link is below. Back to the topic. The other entry requirement is work experience. Some programs may value or require relevant work experience, especially if you lack a strong academic background in a related field. The sixth factor is support services. Look into support services like academic advising, mental health services, and technical support inside the uni you would like to study. Number seven, location and facilities. Consider the uni's location and its proximity to tech hubs or major cities, which can provide better internship and job opportunities. I was hesitating if I should go to UCL or Bristol to study Masters of Science in Computer Science, as Bristol's fee was twelve thousand pounds more than UCL. However, I was super satisfied with UCL's one. When I was in my degree, I attended lots of job fairs. I was very impressed that at a finance job fair. Over 90% of attendees were Chinese, and many of them were from Oxford or even Cambridge. That means they needed to spend over two hours on a round trip for this networking event. So, if an international student doesn't live in London, they need to go to London for more job fairs. Although Oxbridge is so prestigious, it was an opportunity cost not to live in London. Apart from this part. Campus facilities are important as well. Check the availability and quality of campus facilities, like libraries, labs, and study spaces. One thing requiring our attention is how much of the study spaces are usually occupied. Take my experience. Although there were thousands of study spaces in UCL, it's mostly occupied most of the daytime. However, it's super cold in the evenings, especially in winter. So it's not ideal to always stay in the library only in the evenings. So study spaces is very important. The next factor is cost and funding. Probably it's everyone's biggest interest. Compare the tuition fees for different programs. If you would like to study in Europe, make sure to know your identity as EU international or home student. In the UK, I don't think they have EU option now. So all EU will go to international ones now. Conversion courses can vary significantly in cost, and also you could explore scholarships and loans that may be available to help finance your studies. Okay, so the second last one factor I would like to introduce is student feedback. You can look for reviews from current students and alumni to get an idea of their experiences and the program's strengths. And weaknesses. If you have the time, you can also do a SWOT analysis for the program as well. Besides, you can also research the career paths of alumni to see how well the program prepares students for their desired careers. But don't compare yourself to those who already have loads and loads of work experience. People are different. Don't let disappointment destroy you. Finally, we've got to the final factor. We're talking here is application process. So make sure you are aware of their application deadlines and the required documentation, such as transcripts, personal statements, and references. A typical difference between a conversion degree and a normal degree is that there is much more evidence required for most conversion degrees, such as A-level transcripts and related experiences in the specific field. If you are unsure about that. The best way is to ask the admin. If they don't reply, try to go to that uni in person. I did that in 2019. When I walked into the admin office, there were so many applicants there. Some programs may even require an interview as part of the application process. Prepare accordingly, knowing the exact goal or result you want to achieve 
via this course. By thoroughly researching and considering these factors, you can select a degree that best fits your academic background, career aspirations, and personal preferences. Taking the time to evaluate each program carefully will help you make a well-informed decision that sets you on a successful career path. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe, like it, and share my channel with your friends. Also, if you have any interesting topics, let me know in the comment below as well. Bye-bye.